It is yet another Wednesday night. Bible study is in order. Amen. 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 Praise God. Deacon Doug, could you go over there and turn me down just a hair? Yes, sir. Just a hair. Amen. No, it's one, right? Okay, that's good. That's good. Amen. Amen. I ask that you all please pray with me as we uh, usher in the spirit of the Lord and reverence our Heavenly Father. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we say thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to be in your presence, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord God, that you and you alone is the Almighty God. We thank you, Father, for traveling grace, allowing us to make it here tonight. And for those that couldn't make it, Heavenly Father, we thank you for checking in on them, Heavenly Father, taking care of them right where they are, Heavenly Father. We thank you also that the airways are made clear. For those that are at home uh, chiming in on online, Lord God, that the airways are made clear for them to hear a word from you and feel your presence in their own home as well. Father God, I just thank you right now. I, allow, I ask that you allow me to decrease as you increase. And your people shall hear your voice, Lord God. We thank you for the wisdom and understanding of your word. Lord, as your word tells us and all of our getting to get an understanding, we love and praise you in Jesus' holy name. Amen, amen. and amen. 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 You may be seated. Praise amen. God. Amen. And good afternoon to those that are tuned in on Facebook. Amen. Normally you would see my sister Evangelist Butler up here for this month. But uh, praise God, uh, we're going to continue on with what she has going. Amen. And her title for this month is Let God Be God. Now, for some people, that's a hard pill to swallow. To let God be God. You know, in order for us to let God be God, we got to let go of what we think and see. That is logical, because most of the time we're always looking for our logic to take care of things. But God knows all. Amen. God knows all. He's the all-knowing God. Mm. The all-knowing God. We think we know, but we don't. If our thinking and our actions is not what God's actions are, we're wrong. And oftentimes it leads us astray. Because we, we are so adamant about what we do that has to be seen. Or what we do has to be right. What we do has to make sense. And we try to prove that and justify that oftentimes. We try to justify our actions of why we do things. When the truth of the matter is, God doesn't have to justify anything. He just do it. And everything turns out right. So when we try to do things or when we do things and it don't come out right, you'll find yourself in a position of justifying it. You know. But there's, there's no need to try and justify something that God had not ordained or put in order. Amen? Amen. Go ahead, sir. You know, when you uh, say that God, uh, when, you know, the title is let God be God. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's what saying. In order to let God be God, you have to let go <laughs> and, and let God do what he's going to do. Amen. In order to, for God to do what he's going to do, you need to let go because... Either you're going to work on it or God is going to work on it, but you both ain't going to work on it. Amen. And the thing about that is, a lot of times we like to go before God. We try to make something happen. You know, God has something planned for us, and it's right there, it's right there, right where He wanted it to be for us. And what we do is try and make something happen. Because we try to make something happen, we end up make, making big mistakes. And the big mistakes will cause this consequence. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And, uh, you know, I always go back to uh, Isaac. I always go back to Isaac and uh, Ishmael, mm -hmm. you know, and, and Abraham and, and Sarah. Mm -hmm. you know, they, they were doing good. It's just, they just figured they were going to help God out a little bit. <laughs> and that's what a lot of us want to do. We, we want to help God out. 
because it, you know God is not working fast enough for us. So we want to help God out, and then when we try to help God out, we create an issue. We mess things up. And and the thing about that is, listen, God need our help. He uses us to bring people to Him, to reconcile mankind back to Him. But when God is doing something in our lives. You really don't need our help. <laughs> hey man, I'm, I'm glad you went that route because, you know, I was starting to tell you, come on up and finish taking over. But however, <laughs> however, um, you're right on point. You know, um, I, I was going to go back to that as well because I know that's one of the areas that we love going to when we're stepping in the way of God. You know, we, we create, create these Ishmaels, you know, and that's why today there's still war going on because of that. You know, a lot of people don't understand because they don't understand the word of God. They're not being taught. They're not being taught. They're not being taught the true word of God and why things are the way they are. So oftentimes, as we say, you know, we want to step in the way of God. We'll ask God for something. We'll ask him to do something. And he's going to do what he's going to do. But again, there's a process to everything. And we, with our impatient selves, are not patient enough to wait on God to do what he's doing. And his process is for us to learn. It's for us to learn while we're going through these things. So if you're not patient enough to learn, that means you're going to step out and do your own thing. And what you ask God for, you just negated it all. It was like you never asked him. Because you're going to jump right in there and do what you want to do anyway. So why even ask God? Because it sounds good. So you can tell somebody, well, I, I tried God and it didn't work. I see it. I hear it all the time. People say, you know, I tried that, but it didn't work for me. Well, I wonder why it didn't work for you because God has no respect to persons. So if it didn't work for you, maybe you did something. And you didn't let God be God. That's the problem. People won't let God be God. Amen. Go ahead, sis. Think Miss Johnson. <laughs> That's really good. Because oftentimes when people say, well, I tried God and it didn't work. Oftentimes it's not that it didn't work. It just didn't look how they wanted it to look. Wow. And they were so caught up in the in what they wanted it to look like that they missed what he was doing. Amen. Amen. And that's great because it takes us right back to the scripture that Evangelist had took us to, and that's 1 Corinthians 3, 6 through 9. Amen. We're talking about uh, reaping and sowing, you know. Um, here, let me, I'm going to read this in the King James Version. Amen. And again, that's uh, 2 Corinthians. I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, yes. That's 1 Corinthians. 3, 6 through 9. King James. Now, I will read it in another version. As a matter of fact, let me, let me do this. Let me read this in NLT, okay? NLT? Yes, NLT. Mm -hmm. Chapter 3, verse 6 through 9. NLT. Amen. Okay. Okay. All right. The NLT says, I planted the seed in your hearts, and Apollos watered it, but it was God who made it grow. It's not important who does the planting or who does the watering. What's important is that God makes the seed grow. The one who planted and the one who watered work together with the same purpose. And both will be rewarded for their own hard work. 
For we are both God's workers, God's workers, and you are God's field. You are God's building. Amen? Amen. So, again, here, it specifies certain things that we need to pay attention to. We all have purpose. God uses each and every one of us. There's a purpose for every one of us. And if we just do what God purposed us to do and allow him to be him, everything will work out the way he planned it. Amen? And not only work out the way he planned it, but everyone would see what he planned it. Everyone would be a witness to what God intended for things to be like. Amen? So, here's the thing. If I plant an apple seed into the ground, and my brother come over here and he waters it. Now the first thing is, I have to plant it in some soil. I can't just throw it on the ground, because I don't know what type of ground it is. I, I need to put it in good ground. There's a part that I have to play with this. When it says plant, it means to put in, okay? To emerge it into the ground. Then my brother come along and water it. And with him watering it, I mean, you know, that along with the soil and the sun, everything works together now. Don't you know the sun is what really gives it the proper growth process? Here in our lives, if someone plants a seed in our heart, in our mind, in our life, and someone will come along and continue to water that thing with the word of God. The sun, the S-O-N, does what it does. And we will grow and be purposed and we will be what God purposes us to be. Amen? And I hope everyone understands that illustration that I've just given. Amen? Okay, go ahead, Sister Johnson, and then Amen. Deacon Johnson. That was a great illustration. Amen. Um, it brings me to mind, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine. She was telling me, she's like a sister, and we talk like often. So she was sharing with me that a co-worker went to church with her on Sunday. So in, in that, she said, and her husband's an atheist, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but she went to church with me, and I said, oh, honey, that's here, there, and everywhere. Because. He might not believe, but you've been at work planting a seed. Amen. And then she went to church with you, and the seed was watered. Amen. And no matter what happens, God's going to get an increase on Amen. that seed. Amen. So, baby, that's here, there, and everywhere. <laughs> you better praise that. So Amen. when you say, oh, well, that's, that's either here nor there, I said, no, baby, that's everywhere. That's <laughs> everywhere. Amen? Amen. That's good. Leave the card and then I'll see you I love that. That's good because, you know, they're curious. Yes. Mm -hmm. They're curious yes. about who the God you're serving. Mm -hmm. And um, you mentioned how a lot of people uh, uh, either don't receive or don't wait on God. It's because they're impatient. impatient. They want to put their time on it instead of waiting for God's time. Mm -hmm. And when his time is always the right time. Amen. You know, it's a lot of people, and we have been there where we have blocked our blessings. Because yes. we felt like, oh, we got there. Oh, it's yeah, you know, I gotta, I, I gotta be there. And you know, let God be God. Sometimes, you know, people step in the way, uh, not knowing that that person need to hear from God and trust and believe in God and have faith in God and knowing that it's coming. Whatever you pray for, it's coming. Amen. But you have to wait on God and be patient and draw closer to Him. Amen. I love it when you say you have to wait on God. Waiting patiently and believing that it's already done. Amen. Having faith that it's already done. And it shall be. Go ahead, sir. You know, and, and um, as you are having faith, I think we all have this. A lot of people have a hard time doing this. It's called rest. Rest. Rest in the Lord. Just rest. Mm -hmm. And when I say rest, that doesn't mean inactivity. Right. That means cease from your worrying about is it going to happen or not. Yeah, you know, be at peace about it. Because, you know, a lot of times when we put our hand into it, 
and we want to try and make some happiness because we have really we have doubt that the Lord is going to do it. We have doubt in our mind and our hearts that the Lord is going to do it. So what we do is try to help the Lord along. Then we we go and ah, oh, look how the Lord bless me. And then two weeks later, it's something's wrong with it and it's gone. And you're like, oh, well, well, maybe it wasn't. Maybe it wasn't the Lord that said bless me with that eye. <laughs> You know, and that's the whole thing. And just like she was saying, man, a lot of people expect it to come a certain way and look a certain way. However, God don't have to come in the way, the, the logical way that we think he's supposed to come. That's it. And that's people got to stop looking at it like that. I mean, come on. Mary got pregnant without a man. And who said that God is logical? <laughs> Amen. 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 Go ahead, first lady. I see she's getting ready to done. You think Yeah, I had to though. write it down. He was, <laughs> was long-winded, praise the Lord. Uh, I just wanted to say the, the story that you gave about planting the seed and everything. You know, we've really, all of us in here have been in there. Yes. I mean, before we believed, somebody had to plant a seed. Mm -hmm. And then somebody else had to water that seed. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, we made that choice that... I want that relationship with God. Amen. You know? Amen. And that's the thing about it is, you know, when you were talking about people that, well, I've tried God, you know, when you were talking about earlier, it made me think of, you know, early on in, in my walk even, you know, we've all been there and we've all said that, but it's a choice that we made to say, you know what, it's not about what I see right. and what I think, right. I need to make the choice to believe in God and, and what he has done and what he can do in my life. Amen. 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 You know, and that, that's wonderful you went there because it takes me back to the study that I just gave no matter what. Right. I'm going to trust God no matter what. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it sounds like, no matter how logical or unlogical it is, I'm going to trust God. Amen. And and then on top of all of that, there's another scripture we're going to go to that goes along with this. And that was Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. But we're, we're not going right now. Pastor, I'm going to let you go ahead and say what you have to say. You know, um, when, when Jesus came to earth, we are talking about uh, trusting in God. You know, um, Again, it takes us back to what you were saying about we have to let go. Yeah. And and we understand that, hey, as you were saying in Proverbs 3, 5, 6, how God tells us not to lean to our own understanding. Mm -hmm. And yet, that's what people, for the longest, and this, this is what's hard for a lot of Christians now, because for the longest, Christians were taught, okay, you have to do some type of act or some type of ritual mm -hmm. or eat five steps in prayer or eat six steps in meditation. <laughs> and, and because people have been taught that type of stuff, they don't know how to let go and just let God be done. Exactly. And, and so they're always anxious to do something. Now, I remember, you know, old Pastor Green said that you need to pray for five hours and, and you know, nobody, nobody want to talk to you that long. I don't even want to talk to you for five hours. You ain't even going to talk to him that long. You're going to pray for five minutes and sleep for the day. Who are you going to talk to? Oh, I was going to get to five minutes. I know God can talk to you. He can talk to you all day if he wants. But you got so many, so many distractions that a lot of times he waits till night to speak with you. Because you got so many distractions during the day. And your mind has to be clear and, you know, free from distractions right. so that you can hear from him. Amen. Amen. And that is exactly right, you know. Um, and that's the problem with the logical thinking of man. As Pastor was saying, we have been taught for so long that we had to perform and do something in order to move God's hands. But however, this is the thing. Proverbs 3, 5, and 7 says it all. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not towards your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Well, when you don't trust in him because you believe that you got to do something. Because, see, this is the thing. When people say that we need to do something to move God's hand, well, God will do this if you do that. God will do this if you do that. Now, what about the person that is not confident in what they do? So God will never do anything for them. 
in their mind because they're not worthy. They're not worthy. Well, you know, I, I, I couldn't stay awake to pray five hours. So God ain't going to bless me. That's exactly what they've been taught. I can't, you know, I, I can't get to church every Sunday or Bible study every Wednesday. So God ain't going to bless me. So guess what they say next? I got to do what I got to do. Wow. Wow. So you got to do what you got to do, and you're not going to let God be God. You all right? Go ahead, sir. And, you know, that's, that's the big problem with everything because people say they, they look at it and they say, well, you know what? I got to do what I got to do. So what you're telling me is that you, you think that whatever you do can move God. So you have more authority than God himself. You, you can't move God. You, you have to, you know, the Bible says for the woman uh, who had the issue, right? Mm -hmm. She didn't move Jesus. She touched Jesus. She touched Jesus. He said virtue would have power. You know, she touched Jesus. She came to Jesus. She touched Jesus. Mm. It wasn't that she moved God. No, she no. acted upon her faith and she would touch Jesus. And that's what, what people are not doing. They're not acting upon their faith. Amen. And they're trying to make things. It's like you say, well, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do this. I can do this. I can make this happen. And then you make a mess and you expect God to bless it. Wow. You know, man, I tell you, this just what you said right there, you know. We won't let God be God. But we're going to do what we got to do. And we make a mess of it. But it amazes me that God has given us power and authority to do whatever it is we need to do. But we don't have enough power or we don't, have, we don't think we don't think to let God do what he already gave us power to do. Now watch this. And I said that away because there's nothing we can do without him. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. If you would only tap into the greater part that's in you. And that's it spiritually. And understanding that, listen, God put his Holy Spirit in you. His Holy Spirit dwells within us. For a reason. And that's why I said, not by might and not by power, but by my spirit. Amen. Lord. And that's what we, everything we do, we have to do it with intentions. Amen. And do it in Christ or do it through Christ. Amen. 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 You know. That's what people are doing. We got to include God. Amen. Amen. That's the thing. It's always, I have to do, I have to do, and never saying, God, do it. This is really good, and I'm glad that we're on the air because a lot of people is not it's not belittling them. They're not educated with the Bible to apply the knowledge. Amen. You know, we have so much power that God has given us; they're afraid to use it. Amen. Because they don't trust and believe in God that God has given them the power. God has given you the power to pray over yourself and heal yourself Amen. if you trust and believe. Amen. God has given you the power to speak over so many things, but you got to wait patiently and knowing that claim it and receive it. A lot of people, you know, I, 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 no, put I, take I out of it and, and put God in it and realize what's going to happen. Amen. Amen. You know, it's funny you say that, um, you know, not to belittle. And no, you're not belittling them. Yes, they are uneducated, so they are totally, I mean, the word ignorant don't mean stupid or dumb. Mm -hmm. It's just you don't know. So there's a lot of people ignorant, but God's word says, I would not have you ignorant to my word. That's, that's scripture. That he would not have us ignorant, meaning that everything that he wants us to know, we will know. Everything we're supposed to know about this word is right here before us. Amen. By his spirit. Listen, if his spirit dwells within us, 
our part is to continue to be in his word. The Bible says in John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be given unto you. But there has to be an abiding. You got to abide in the word. The word got to abide in you. And together, together, things happen. So now if the word just abides in you, but you're never abiding in the word, that's one-sided. And God will not force you to do anything. He's not going to make you do anything. We hear it all the time in people's prayers. Oh, God, make me, make this, make him, make her, make this, make that. No, God ain't going to make you do anything. God will help you through everything. But he won't make you do anything. If you find yourself being made to do something, understand that's not God. God doesn't work that way. We've heard it before in a church. God made me do crack. Oh boy. That was a whole a problem with that. A real problem with that. God would not make you do any act that's gonna harm you to force you to come to him. He don't have to do that. He said, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. That's the only way God's gonna get you to him through loving kindness. And he did that once. And for all. His grace and his mercy is sufficient. Amen. Jesus was the only. Amen. Jesus, Jesus was the only person. That could sustain. Sin. And overcome it. Oh she got your beat. <laughs> Amen. You better write it down. Praise the Lord. I, you had went to Proverbs 3. Um, you said 5 through 7. I, I just wanted to read this in the Amplified Version really quick because what you were just talking about pretty much says this. Starting at verse 5, it says, Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure everything out on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. Don't assume that you know it all. And that's that that speaks to what you were talking about before too, because people get frustrated because it's not looking like they want it to look. And then they try to go do it on their own and they get off track. When if you would just be patient, you know, like Deaconess Carter was saying, and trust in him then it will come to pass. You have to believe you have a part in that. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Um, I like what you said about how Jesus uh, took on everyone's sin. And, that, and, and the thing about it was he, he did exactly what the word said. The Bible said for the wages of sin is death. When he took on everybody sin, what happened to him? He died. He died. He gave up the ghost. Amen. Amen. And what he did is, you know, we know that he uh, went into the grave. He got the keys of uh, the keys back from uh, Satan, mm -hmm. his power, and, and sure enough, he gave it to us because we are what we are the body of Christ. So Jesus moves through us here in this earth. Amen. You know, and this is why we have to get out of that mindset of you know me myself and I. Yeah. Because everything God done, everything Jesus done. It was for everybody. It wasn't just for, it wasn't, it wasn't even for Jesus himself. It wasn't a selfish move. No, it wasn't, there was no selfishness at all in it. At all. What he did, he did it for all of us. You know, he received our sin and the wages of the sin of death. And now we've been delivered from sin's consequences. Amen. Because sin is no longer being charged to our account. Amen. The scriptures. Amen. 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 That's very good, you know. When, when we look at it that way, you know, but this is the problem. People can't see that. People don't even believe when you say Jesus went in the pits of hell and worked upon the devil and got the keys back and gave them to us. They don't believe that. Because they're thinking logical. They're thinking that they're supposed to really have something in their hand, tangible. Amen. They're, they're looking at something that they have to do. Something that they physically have to do. 
And it's funny because you got all these religious churches making people do stupid stuff. I'm just okay. Speech, so the Brit. Amen, 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 amen. You got a mic. Okay. Praise God, amen. Thank you. I'm, I'm loving these comments, man. I just want to piggyback. Push the button up. That helps. <laughs> I just want to piggyback on what you said earlier. You said people think it's something they have to do. Um, people take the uh, faith without works is dead out of context. You know? Yes, they do. And yes. they figure that, they, that what they, ha they have to do something in order for God to move. Yeah. And I'm glad you said that. And I see you preach that. Good name. But I'm glad you said that. They take it out of context because they're only looking at the works part of it. But the work part of it is to work your faith. Not for you to physically work. This is for you to work your faith spiritually. Faith without works. What am I working? I'm working my faith. Amen? Go ahead, sir. Uh, but it's a very popular uh, pastor on TV. His name is Bill Winston. I don't know if yeah, yeah, I know Bill. You know, he was, he was saying at one point, he said that he was asking, you know, what's going on in that church in there? And they said, well, people are getting the Holy Ghost. He said, well, how do you get the Holy Ghost? And they said, well, what you do is you go up front, and the people, what they do is they <laughs> knock you down, and then they roll you down the aisle in the carpet. In the, in the carpet. They roll you up and roll you down the aisle in the carpet. Smoke your legs. My fault, my fault, my fault. I wasn't supposed to say that. And then, and then, then you'll have the Holy Spirit. What kind of mess is that? Mess. It's mess. And people are Ooh. telling folks to do some, some heinous things in order to learn the word. You know, I, I was talking to my mother uh, yesterday, and she was talking about my uncle, because he, he's pastoring the church that she's at now, right? Mm -hmm. And she said, finally, you know, I mean, she said, I've never been in an environment like that, because he's teaching. Right. He's teaching. Right. And I explained to her how the teacher was the most neglected, and how Jesus. You know, when they talk to Jesus, they didn't call him prophet, pastor, they didn't evangelist, they call him teacher. Right. 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 And so, in the same way, man, it's like, when you start walking to church and you're doing a bunch of strange stuff, how are you making God attractive? How are you making, no, you know what they're going to do? You come to church, they come to church, they see you speaking in some language that they don't know what's going on, and you know, you talking about, oh, I'm speaking in tongues, they think that you uh, got some type of witchcraft stuff going on, and, and, and you know, it, it scares them. Not only that, the ones that are ignorant will follow it. There are a lot of ignorant people yes. who follow that, yes. because I used to be one. Yeah. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I, I know. And, and, and I only mention it because there's a flip side to this. Yep. Those that know or even have an inkling of Christ in them and the word of God in them, know that that's not God. But then you have those that don't have a relationship and not been taught about the word of God, not not knowing, just ignorant. I had, I had a lot of religion. And that's what I was there you taught. go. There you and go. because I was taught that religion, I had to do 30 steps to, or four steps to prove my faith to God, or, you know, it was always some type of ritual. Mm -hmm. you know, always some type of ritual. And, and God is not into us doing rituals. You know what I mean? If people look at the Old Testament, for some reason, they take things that they saw in the Old Testament and they try to bring it out. You know, they try to make it, oh, well, that's a part of grace. No, it ain't no, it's a part not. of grace. No, it's not. No, it's not. That wasn't given to people who are under grace. Right. You know, we, we've never been under that. But None of us knew that until God revealed that to us that, hey, wait a minute. The law was never given to us. But people in the church, even my mother said, she said, you know, we've been in church forever. And you tell me we don't know nothing? I just started laughing. She said, I just started laughing. She said, it's just, she said that's, that's terrible. I said, yeah, ain't it? But that's how it is. People are in the church 50, 40, 50 years and don't know nothing. Because they're running behind the pastor who don't know nothing. Amen. And, and you know, they're taking stuff out of context in the Bible, out of the scriptures. You know, I, 
it's, it's crazy. I had to explain to my mother about the deal with the, uh, why do we, a lot of times we stay away from the King James. And I was telling her, because, you know, I said, look, mom, in the King James Bible, it says, it talks about unicorns. I said, do you know what a unicorn is? And everybody, you know, immediately when you hear unicorn, everybody in mind go to, oh, this horse with, with a, horn, on with a horn on his head. And then some of us are graphic. We got, we got the, the uh, uh, rainbow and the that, wings on the horse, stuff. you know. Like, right. Because we don't let TV tell us what a what vision it is. Yeah. And the reason it was like that is because um, the King James, the, the Elizabethan language, don't have the, the letters that we have in order to explain certain things. Right. And so back in the day, I mean, when you talk about unicorns, it, it used the word unicorn um, because they didn't have the letters to make the word rhinoceros. <laughs> you know, there's two types of rhinoceros. There are one with two horns and then yeah, one, one with one. one. And the one with one horn is considered to be a unicorn. See? You know, it's funny because, again, this is teaching. The most neglected thing in the fivefold ministry. Now, I'm loving this because, as you were saying, God has not given us the law. The law wasn't made for us. And immediately my mind went to, you don't put new wine into old wine skins. Lest it would burst and no one would joy enjoy the sport. So, what am I saying here? I'm not going backwards into the Old Testament when my grace comes from the New Testament. Why would I leave grace and go back to law that was never meant for me? Hello. So, you know, for you that are online, that didn't know this, I'm telling you now. You live today under grace. If you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are saved by grace through faith. Ephesians 2 and 8. Amen. And no one can change that but you if you decide that you don't want to believe in Jesus anymore. That's it. That's it. As long as you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are saved by grace. And no one else can change that. And because of you being saved by grace, you have the benefits through grace, through faith, to live life freely. You are free in Christ Jesus to live life. If you're living under the law, you're not living life. You're not living life. You're living in bondage. There's too many rules and regulations that man put on man that God has not put on man. God is not a man that he should lie. When he said you're free, you're free. Amen? When he said he loves you, he loves you. In spite of you loving him. In spite of you. Yeah, that's true. That's true, in spite of you. So what we need to continue to understand is that we need to let God be God. But in order to let God be God, you got to know who God is. You've got to know who God is. Amen? Amen? You won't turn over anything to God because you don't know who you're turning it over to. If someone's teaching you religion, do you know, and I see this, is, do you know you can be turning stuff over to Satan and not know it? You think that you're doing something godly, but you're only doing something that may seem to be godly. The Bible says there's things that seem right to man in the end thereof. Amen. Go ahead, sis. But it all boils down to they need to know that we have a God of love. Amen. We are not from a God of wrath. Amen. That's not, that's not what we have. He is a God of love, the basis of love. 
That's that's the base of all things. And so when people say, Oh, God's gonna get you, well that's not loving <laughs> that's not loving. That ain't my God. That ain't that ain't who I, that's not who I serve. Which God are you talking about? Wait, that, wait, let's talk about this now. Let's talk about this. And let's just talk about this. No, I'm not going to hell because I did 75 and 60. That's not the God I serve. I might get a ticket. Yes. Come on now. I might get a ticket, but I'm not going That's to hell. That's the law of the land. Right? The law right. Of the land. Right. Now, let's, right. Now let's, let's talk about it. But I'm just saying, no, because right. they don't know, right, that we serve a God of love. Amen. We Amen. serve a God of love. Amen. Not a God of wrath. Amen. And it's funny you say that, and I'm glad you brought that around because too many people don't understand that the Old Testament talked about God's wrath on man. And it was a conditional thing. If you did this, God would do that. And this is what religion is still pushing today. They're still keeping people in the Old Testament saying that you must do this in order for God to do that. When God has already done what he's going to do, he ain't going to do no more. Because it's all been done. Amen. Go ahead, sir. You know, it's, it's one of the things I talked about Sunday. On Sunday, one of the things was, um, you know, everyone in the Old Testament, they always talk about God is a jealous God. <laughs> God is a jealous God. You know, and, and I'm like, okay, so when we look at the scripture and we see that God is love, and then go back to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and it explains 13, 4 through 8, it explains what love is, mm -hmm. and one of the things it had in there is love is not jealous. So if God is love, then how can love be jealous? How can God be jealous if he's love? That's an oxymoron. Yeah. yeah. And see, and people don't know that because they see you all running around. See, you got to know what you're doing, and I'm telling you, God is a jealous God. You better quit that. You better stop trying to you know what? Who, who are you talking to? Man, I'm like, I don't know you. That ain't my God y'all talking about. I'm telling you. That's your God. <laughs> you know, I said, you getting it in, sis. You getting it in. Until I say, I'm going to get it where I fit in. I'm so sorry. I got you. No, don't be sorry. You good. Cause it, it also goes back to, right? God forgave you for all things. Mm -hmm. For all things, yes, right? Yes, Today. And forevermore, right? But when you don't know that, right? And so then you have someone standing in the pulpit saying that you're going to hell, you need to get this right, you need to do that, right? They literally speak to the insecurity of someone who's sitting there holding on to unforgiveness of themselves. Amen. It's also easy for them to believe that word because they ain't forgave themselves. Now realizing that the word clearly says, God forgave you. Yes, but they don't know the word. Amen. They don't know the word, and they're not sitting there as someone who's teaching them the word. They're sitting there as someone who's preaching at them what they want them to know, which is, which, which is wrong. There we go. Wrong. There we go. Wrong. There we go. Wrong. Right there. It's wrong. That's it. They it's put wrong. it under their thumb. Yeah. It's wrong. So, you know, it's funny because you mentioned this quite a few times. Uh, and I love it when you say that you were taught certain things through cemetery. Was it cemetery or seminary? Oh, anyway, yeah, seminary. Yeah, yeah. 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 But you were taught some things and you had to be deprogrammed. See, a lot of people don't want to be deprogrammed from the old religious teachings that they've been taught growing up as a kid. And now you brought that same mess. Listen. The Bible says, for your traditions have made the word of God of no effect. It means nothing. Your traditions coming, I mean, you're still teaching the law. You're still preaching the law. You're still telling people to go to hell. You're still preaching fire and brimstone. You're still telling people that if you don't do this, God ain't going to do this. Come on now. Where is the love in that? Where is the growth in that? There is none. There is none. You will not grow because you're stuck in tradition. <laughs> this is really good. You know, again, I'm glad that it's on the internet because a lot of people 
are hearers. And I, you know, I pray that they take heed to it and apply it to their life. You know, a lot of people who are stuck in bondage, they don't want to change because they just settle it. They're comfortable with it. Or they're afraid. Or they're afraid what whoever over here might say. But God is so gentle. He's so patient with us. He loves us. You know, I thank God for his grace and mercy each and every day. Because guess what? He don't forget about neither one of us. That's right. I know his day is busy. But he said, well, you know what? I got you. Amen. I said, thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, I like that. And I saw you, Pastor. I like that when you said, you know, that they're comfortable, you know, with whatever. No, they are conformed. And the Bible tells us that be ye not conformed to the ways of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And they're not being renewed because they're being taught the same old tradition. They're being taught the same old mess that's keeping them in bondage that they're stuck. They are stuck in bondage and don't even know it. But they think in their mind that that is the way to live when they're not living at all. Amen. Go ahead, sir. It's like uh, I heard this one pastor say at a certain place that uh, they're going to have a enhanced appreciation and their main scripture will be Second you know, Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people. If my people, which are called oh, by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. Then will I forgive their sins. Then will then I heal their land. Will I hear them heal their <laughs> land? You know, it, I'm like, you know what? All that was talking about, it was all that was talking about what was to come. Exactly. And that had been fulfilled. Jesus fulfilled everything, yes. right? That had been fulfilled. But for some reason, they're still going back to these old scriptures, teaching people to live by these scriptures. And people are like, oh man. You know, if if we can uh, if we live by God's name, we'll humble ourselves and pray. And you know, now God is saying, Hey, look, don't come to me by humbling. So He said, Come boldly, boldly to the throne of grace. Of grace. Right. You know, come boldly to the throne of grace. Why? Because now we all, you know, here's what I, I think people forget. Period. Um, they don't know the difference that in the Old Testament, <laughs> Jesus, nobody was saved in the Old Testament. Amen. Nobody was saved Amen. until after Jesus did what he did on the cross. Nobody was saved. So the, the, the law didn't save anybody. But yet they keep going back to it like it gave people righteous righteousness. And it never, the law never gave anybody righteousness. No. No. Yes, the law was so righteous that nobody can keep it. So nobody had, that's why the scripture says that the law increased death. I mean, sin. sin. Well, yes. it increased sin and increased Pretty death. death because the way of sin is yeah. death. Amen. And so, you know, people are still going back to these, these scriptures. Now, these scriptures are good if you teach them properly. They said, hey, yeah, well, this was speaking of what was to come. come. You know, this, this was a shadow of what was to come. And this actually came to pass at this time. And they're not doing it. They're just looking at it like, okay, well, this is how it's supposed to be. So now... It takes them back to the law. If one people, what you call by my name, will do something. If they do something, then I will. Exactly. And, condition. and that ain't how it works. That ain't how that ain't how grace works at all. And grace, the way grace works is Jesus said, it is what? Finished. Finished. That means everything's already done. It's done already. So you ain't uh doing something so God can do something for you. God has already did everything. You yes. just need to do what you need to do to achieve what God has already put up. Amen. Amen. I'm loving this. I'm loving this because what you just described in the Old Testament, um, talking about the conditions, you know, if you did this, God will do that. You know, it's funny that you can, people will still harp on a condition, but never realize that we have an unconditional love from God. God loves us unconditionally. So where is condition in this? There is none. There is no conditions. Amen. Faith. When you receive Jesus' love, when you receive Jesus, which is love, you receive God's grace, which is God's love unconditionally. Too many people, I see, I see you should jump over there. Too many people have not received Jesus 
wholeheartedly. They heard about him. They're still hearing about him, but they're never re wholeheartedly receiving him. You've only got to receive him as your Lord. Say, Listen, when we talk about this, the, the prayer of salvation, it is very simple. But religion makes it hard. They, they still tell you that you got to do something. You got to repent from your sins. You got to speak in tongues, which is the first evidence of being saved. Hey, yeah, right. Wrong answer. Wrong answer. Let's get where we need to be and let God be God. Get where we need to be and let God be God. Where do we need to be? We need to be in place. To get the word of God, get more of God in us so that we can let him be more of who he is through us. Amen? Because more of you, him you get in you, the more you can give out to somebody else. Amen. You can never give anybody something that you don't have. Amen. Now when people talk about knowledge is power, no, applied knowledge is power. Amen. Me talking to you means nothing if I don't know about it. If I'm just saying something that I heard, I'm just jibber jabbering gossiping. Because I'm only speaking what somebody said. I don't believe what I'm saying, but I'm telling you what he said. Hey, because Pastor Green said, I can lay hands. Did you have your hand first? Oh, okay, I thought you were writing something down. I was talking to you. Oh, okay, I got you. I got you. Did I have anybody else that wants to? Oh, okay. Did, oh. Sister Brenda, and then Nigga Duff. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. I don't want to miss nobody because this is on fire, y'all. Praise God, praise God. <laughs> we were talking about the conditions earlier, and a lot of people get church hurt because of these conditions. Yes. Um, yes. But we forget that church, among the other things, is a hospital. People Hello. don't get people come to church because. Um, they want to get better. Now you're talking, girl. And, um, uh, how can you, yeah. teach you. <laughs> she teaches. Yeah. And how can you get in, in um, being the church is a hospital? Everybody comes because they're trying to get better. Mm -hmm. And then you hear about all of these conditions that make you feel bad about the person you already are. So what do you do? You turn around and you leave. Mm -hmm. and you turn around, you leave, you never come back because, you know, you didn't come to get beat up. People Amen. run from beating. They don't, they don't go to it. Bible beating. <laughs> they Bible beating. Yeah, so if, if, you, if, if, if people hear about the conditions first without really under, not, without understanding come on the for the conditions and then learning later that, you know, we were, we're all saved from those conditions. Come on now. Then, Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's awesome, sis. Thank you for that. You got Deacon Duncan. Amen. Amen. That's awesome. You got your hand up, Hector? I know this, you did. this is good. Because here's what religion do. Religion set rules. Now, come on now. God sets free. Come on now. Amen. And I like that. I like that. And the truth will set you free. And therefore, if the son sets you free, you're free indeed. Amen. 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 That's, That's his word. Scripture. That's his word. That's scripture. See, they got to quit listening to because there were 613 rules and we couldn't even follow 10. Okay? That was written on stone. It wasn't made for us. It wasn't given to us. Amen. God sets free. Amen. And if he sets you free, you're free indeed. Amen. 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 And no condition will no hold condition. you to sin. Amen. Did you have something, sir? Okay, good deal. Amen. Listen, I'm telling you right now that. Oh, you got Oh, praise God. Praise God. If we only, if we only draw closer to Him. Amen. Okay, now you want to say something. Yeah, now I want to say something because you said, yeah, well, that's why the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 2 15, right? What does it tell us? Study to show thyself show to God. Amen. Word, but it need not be ashamed, but rightly, rightly dividing. dividing what it says, rightly dividing the word of truth. It is saying in English, rightly explaining exactly. the word of truth. Exactly. And so that's the problem because people are rightly explaining it. But how can they rightly explain it if they believe that they're still under the conditions? 
Yeah. You know, it's, it's like Sister was saying there, you know, people don't go to church for a bunch of rules and regulations. You know, people don't go to church. And it's funny because those are the churches that pack. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's funny, yeah. right? Yeah. And the thing, and, you know, you don't go to the hospital, you know, if you got a broken arm, you go to the hospital to get it cast up, get it fixed. And what do they do? Break your leg and send you back home. <laughs> you know, you, you feel worse now. And, you know, before you it went in, you know, you were worse off now than what you was before you went in that place. Right. And if that's how that's how churches are treating people today, and it's sad, and they should not be treating folks that way. God is love, and love does not do that. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm glad you took it around to that, you know. God is love because as he was mentioning earlier, the scripture says God is not, I mean, love is not jealous love does not hurt love doesn't, is not envious love doesn't keep a, a record of wrongdoings it's not selfish, all of these things listen, if you are experiencing any of these things jealousy, selfishness hurt you know, um, somebody putting you down Never esteeming you, never lifting you up. That is not love and that is not God. Amen. Amen. It's been smiling one time years ago. Years ago. And not here. But years ago, um, we had church early Sunday morning. And at the end, they were like, We're not meeting this evening. Mandatory meeting. Everybody's required to be here. And I'm like, uh, okay, yeah, my husband might not like that, but all right. And it was football season, I'm young. Oh, like, stop. I was like, oh, <laughs> Lord. So I'm like, okay. So we come back, and immediately they started off with this dress code situation. Really? It's not this church. It oh. wasn't this church. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what now? So... They go over, you know how we we not supposed to wear this, this, and this, and I was like, I thought we was high down denomination. Like I, I think I spent the whole time we was in there, and I kept saying that to myself. I thought we was high <laughs> and, and my friend was there, and I kept looking at her like, what? I thought what is happening? I don't think I really heard anything beyond dress code, right? But they gave us a handout when we left. So I was like, like there. We ride home, and I'm like, they're, they're serious. Like, they packed up a thing. Like, this is cool. Like, oh, my gosh. But, you know, we're young. I was, like, in my early 20s. And so you think, like, oh, my God. Like, so can we, we're not going to be able to come back to church? Like, what is happening? So the next day, here we are at Kmart and Walmart. You know, we have the military. We got the money trying to find clothes. <laughs> to abide by this dress code, right? But not us, not just us, a bunch of other people in there. And we all got this brand. It was too quick. Now, now, now when I think about it, I laugh every time I, I think about this thing. Because we was all in there with this piece of paper. Like, okay, is this going to work? Like, and what, you think this will work right here? Like, for real. And then, never once were we like, well, I wonder what it was talking about. We're so busy trying to make sure we, we are. are on the court. Mm -hmm. Years mm -hmm. later, this is how God brought it to me. <laughs> if I were the offender of the situation, God would have massaged my heart in time. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that would have been changed anyway. Mm -hmm. oh but because of someone else's insecurity, you bring a whole bunch of people in the church and you have a meeting to address someone else's insecurity. Pastor's insecurity. I don't know who it was. I don't know. But Sorry. that was a mess because you cause people to have financial hardships. Mm -hmm. Right? Low self-esteem. Some low self-esteem issues. All for how, however many people to, to help some other people. Which isn't, that's not fair. That's not, that's not who God is. But again, that is what religion will do. That is what religion will do. And that's not who God is. It's in bondage. And, and I'm going to close out with this because it's funny that you brought that story up. This is where people get, I ain't got no church clothes from. 
This is why people don't come to church because they don't feel like they have any church clothes. What is church clothes? It's whatever you wear. God ain't looking at what you got on. He's looking at what's in your heart. Amen. Amen. You are clothed in righteousness. Amen. Amen. So wear righteousness wherever you go. Come as you are. I am the righteousness of God. Just have some clothes on Amen. Just, just, just I am the righteousness of God, and that's the way you tell people, I am the righteousness of God. I am clothed in his righteousness. So therefore, I am the church. As I turn it over to the deacons. Amen. Amen. Amen.